I had a great comment from uh, one of the members of the channel who saw this icon on my desktop and asked me, what is that? Is it a piece of software? And it made me laugh in a good way because uh, it's a, just a custom icon that I made. And this goes back about 10 years with me because my eyesight's not fantastic. And at the time I was working on a laptop that was set back, I was drawing on the tablet and I realized I was having trouble reading the, the names. And this could come in handy for people that maybe have eyesight problems or people who have dyslexia as well or any number of op visual issues. Again, my I, I my, I'm also mildly colorblind in the blue-gray range. It's kind of a rare one, but it doesn't affect me really, but it's kind of peculiar. Anyway, um, so this is a custom icon. That's all it is. So this is the work folder. And what I did was I spent, I think, about two months going through every file on my computer and making a custom icon. So uh, it's the kind of thing that a lot of people mightn't realize that you can do fairly easily. And it was kind of trickier when I began doing it because I didn't have some of the software that I do now. Um, but I've made custom icons because it makes it easier for me to find things. And if you're familiar with any of my rants, one of my bugaboos is this monochrome icons. And this goes across all developers now. They love these stupid monochrome icons um, because it loads all of the um, brain work onto the, the visual shape. And you see that it's almost impossible then because you, you end up with many shapes like this and this that are the same basic shape. Okay, we have the dots around it. That's fine. But all, other shapes can be re remarkably similar. And like these two are basically a, a diagonal line. And Photoshop is no different. Photoshop has the same issue. They're the they're worst culprits in this. I think they kind of started it all. So one of the first things your brain does with, with um, recognizing patterns is color. Color is one of the first things, maybe the first thing that we notice, especially red. And that's why traffic lights are in color. They're not shapes. This will come as, as a surprise to the UI designers in Adobe. If they design traffic lights, it'll be a square, a triangle, and a circle. And they, a lot of people would die. So we have red, orange, green. Easy, easy concept. Difficult concept for a lot of UI designers. Rant over. So I thought, let's find a way to make it easier for my adult brain to be able to find the things on my hard drive. That means things that are different in color and shape. Now, now you have two ways of differentiating between the different objects that you're going to work with. So I'll just show you my work folder. I'll give you a quick tour. So this is the uh, nightmare scenario for me. It's all of my uh, YouTube and Patreon videos. I'm very difficult to keep on top of this. These, I really don't go yet into the trouble of customizing them. My wife and I do a blog slash podcast about James Joyce's Ulysses called Looms and Barnacles. I've been getting a bit slack with some of these. But for example, if you tell me we need to go back and edit the episode where we talked about stellar parallax in Don't Sink Observatory. There you go. Got a telescope. So it definitely has made my life easier having these. And even the ones that I haven't gone to yet, it means if, if we need to work on one that I haven't done, done an icon for, well, it's, some, it's just one of this like five or six, right? Uh, James Joyce is the dead. Easy to find. We've done one on Aristotle. Well, guess what? That's Aristotle. That's basically the process that um, I use to to, you know, develop all my stuff. I have a lot of Linda courses. These could all be generic folders. I, you know, like looking like this. Instead, what I've got are beautiful icons. And I think there might be this one. I should probably <laughs> go in and um, put little thumbnails on here. It's definitely a bit of work, but uh, even at this level, the upper level to have these custom icons does make my life simpler um, because your brain starts to go, where was that file? Oh yeah, it was in the one with the top hat. I, mean, I could stand like on the other side of the room with a wireless mouse and, and actually find the folder that's got files that I need. So when your work reaches sort of a critical point, the sheer mass of files that you have can be really overwhelming. I've reached that point like a long time ago. So to have these tools uh, is very cool. So how did I do it? You can download custom icons online. Uh, let me show you my folder. So I put them on my C drive because, you know, that's where the operating system is. But I also have them backed up because so much work went into these. If I lost them, I'd be devastated. So let's pick, I don't know, uh, some of these are ones I... I they're free icons that I downloaded. Um, some are just like random objects that I use whenever. Um, I apply them to new folders as I create them. I always kind of have planets. These are not, I did not make these. These were all got from one of the free icon download websites. Let me try to find one where it's full of stuff that I made. Yeah, this is a good example. So the all the Linda courses that I made or LinkedIn Learning as it is now uh, needed to have custom icons, whether I was doing a course on Flash or Animate CC or Toon Boom Harmony, Photoshop or what have you. So then I, these are generic ones that I didn't have to do. These these ones here are um, icons from slides in the courses themselves. And they definitely helped me to remember, oh, right, the one with the flying alien guy with the big eyeball. Guess what? It looks like that. And I used a program called IcoFX. So then you can bring your files into here. There isn't, and it, this will then allow you to save the file. So let me open one. I don't know, this kind of mummy here. So he has like an alpha channel behind him. And so you can create by right click here, you can make a new image and 
and you can it's you know two five six by two five six you want to have kind of the biggest file that you can comfortably work with but this will allow you then to make smaller files because sometimes your operating system might like to have a 128 by 128 so you've got a custom you can you can make multiple so I, on, I've got already got a 256 by 256 what if I want a 48 by 48 click OK and you know if that's going to be seen at a smaller like size and list view or whatever then you can do that and then you can go file save as and it saves it as a .ico file so the other way that you can do it is to work in Krita Krita is great support for ICO files which is brilliant this is our bloomsandbarnacles.com uh, logo and you can make a and I think it's a let's see what the size is yeah 256 by 256 that's fine that's the uh, the biggest file size actually for uh, icons so then you can go file save as and you can save as a windows icon.ico if you're working on a mac i would assume there's a mac file i don't mess with that because i'm on a pc um but that's it then you've got your ico file and the one thing about an ico file in credit it'll be one size i don't think it supports the the different file sizes so ico fx is free or was free anyway i'm sure that you can download the last free version if they've gone paywall hopefully they haven't but that's the those are the tools that i use and um, that allows me then to have this nice uh, layout same thing with my library file this is something i'll talk about in a separate movie how i store all of my reference material because we're approaching a point in time when it's going to be very dangerous to rely on things like image search for google the way they're uh, infesting their search engine with ai slop would strongly recommend to anybody to begin saving up their own personal image morgue. You can do it with physical or physical media, or you can do it with digital media. That's fine. I've been very slipshod over the years, finding really cool images and not saving them. The sooner you start, the better. Um, I've got like uh, comic book collections, uh, the uh, a lot of English focused 2000 AD, Alan Moore, of course. I love all of the old uh, 70s stuff as well. So, uh, and that's great reference. I haven't actually read The Walking Dead, uh, the later half of it, so time. Let's see here what else do we have my commercial art library uh, I love the the period stuff um, so again it's trying to build up uh, a huge back catalog of stuff so that were I either the internet to go down um, I would still be able to have access Bernie Fuchs great great uh, artist and because these um, uh, thumbnails are so big uh, you can really get a sense for you know the the actual file so uh, these are the actual previews as well but here the uh, that's as big as I can make them so um, that's pretty decent that gives me a great sense of the contents of each folder makes it much easier to find things uh, let's see what else Oh, my Don Bluth folder, which I should probably go through sometime. A lot of Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. Uh, some Secret of Nim stuff, which is nice. Uh, all the old studio news from the uh, the old Bluth studio. Okay, anyway, that's about that. That explains the mysterious uh, work icon you asked. I answered. Um, but yeah, like I probably could talk uh, more length about like building up a library of visual reference material um, and the importance of saving it too. I don't have to sponsor, so if you want to support my work and help it continue, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'm making new animation projects week by week and providing animation assets that can be downloaded and used. I also have a very large collection of tutorials in the LinkedIn Learning Library covering animation and design, and I'm putting all the links to these in the notes below.